This video coincides with chapter four of the book. We're starting with a blank Unity project and we're going to create our terrain. So game object from the top menu, 3D object, and then terrain. The inspector view reveals several settings. Here in the terrain component, we click the terrain settings cog, and here you can see various settings for it. One of the things we do want to change is we want to change the height to 200 instead of 600. And then we want to scroll down a little bit and under height map we want to import raw. The book shows how to create that. And so we'll go ahead and navigate to where that is. And here we have the import height map dialog. The only change we need to make here is the byte order. We want to switch that to Mac, regardless if we're on a Windows or Mac machine, and then click import. Once the import operation is complete, we'll double click terrain in the hierarchy view, and we'll get a better look at it. And you see this very spiky. Uh, this is very common. And we're going to go ahead and address that now. Let's get a little bit better orientation here. Just navigating that to where it's in the center of our scene view. Now over in the inspector view in the train component, there are several tools. And if you look at the third button here, it's called the smooth height. And we're going to change our brush size and then move over and we're just going to Rub that brush right over this train and make it much smoother. You can, of course, be as detailed as you want to be. This is just a quick overview of how to do this. Ideally, you would start with a big brush, get a major work done, and then use a smaller brush to get exactly how you want it. Next thing we want to do is we want to create some spawn points. Those spawn points are where the character is going to spawn after it's been defeated. So we're going to use the paint height tool. And that's the second button here. And we're going to pick a little bit smaller brush. And all we're going to do here is we're going to create flat spaces. It doesn't, you can put these anywhere you want to just for illustration purposes. And then of course, at some point you'll want to ensure that the character can walk in between all these spots and elsewhere as, as needed. Okay, the next thing we'll do is we'll paint our terrain. And we see here the fourth button over is called paint texture. We don't have any textures in our game yet, so I'm going to under assets here in the project view. I'm going to right click and we're going to create a folder and we'll just call it textures. And don't click that to open it. I'm going to drag a file into that folder. You'll have access to this in your in the books um, web component. So now let's click on terrain and we have the paint texture, and then in the texture area, we have, we have the edit texture button. We can add a texture. There we go, we just go through the menu process. And this time we won't forget to click add here at the bottom. There we go, our texture has been painted. And of course you can see in the lower right corner is baking, so it takes a little while. Um, and <clears throat> Next thing we want to do is simulate water. So we're going to create a new folder for materials. This is a cheap man's version of water. And then in that folder, I'm going to create a material. We'll just call it water. 
And then here in the inspector view, you can see the colors. Uh, we'll pick a color. There we go. And then we have our material water. And we're going to create a pane. So we'll create an object, 3D object, and then, excuse me, plane. And I'm going to raise that up. I want to make this very, very large. And once the plane is large enough, we can apply a material to it over here in the specter view. We can make the change there. We can also just drag the material onto it. It's quicker. And then we'll lower it. We're pretending that this is water. So as you can see, if we go below the terrain, you, you can see what it looks like. And then as we raise it, basically raising the water level, we're creating an island and maybe some smaller islands. So we'll leave it just like that. And there's that. The last thing we need to do here is to add vegetation. We can do that through the game object, 3D object, and then tree. And you can see where that tree is placed basically in position 000. We can move that into our scene and double click it so we can zoom in on it. And there it is. This is uh, creating your own tree instead of importing other trees. And in the inspector view, you can see uh, that there's a tree root node here. And then right above that is a branch group. And we can add branches to it. As many as we want. And we can also add leaves. And as you can see here, you can change the distribution with frequency of placement. You can change the angle. Lots of different options here that you can explore. And that is all for this video.